Hey everyone, welcome back. So you've probably heard this a thousand times. AI is changing everything. It's the biggest tech shift since the internet. Every other headline says the same thing, right? AI is the future. AI will rewrite how we work, live and even think. And investors also seems to agree. I mean, just look at the sky high valuations of AI companies. But here is a question worth asking. Is AI really worth all this hype? What if the real measurable impact turns out to be a lot smaller than what headlines make it sound? And that's exactly what Darren Asimoglu, professor at MIT and winner of 2024 Nobel Prize for Economics believes. According to his research, the total productivity boost from AI could just be a mere 0.7% over the next 10 years. That's not per year but over the entire decade. And that roughly translates to only 1.1 to 1.3% of total GDP growth over the next 10 years. That's surprisingly modest for something that's supposed to change everything. So let's see why he says so and what it really means for the economy. Okay, so how does Asimoglu arrive at this number? Let's try to understand and uh, break it down. So imagine the economy as a giant machine, uh, every part of it, factories, software firms, hospitals, all create value using two main ingredients, people doing the work, that is labor, and machines, tools, money, that is capital. Now in economic terms, these are called factors of production. Uh, the way Esimoglu approaches to estimate the impact of AI is, he poses the question by how much can AI actually make this machine more efficient? And to answer that, Esimoglu uses something called total factor productivity or TFP, which basically measures how efficient labor and capital, the two factors of production work together in an economy. But what is efficiency in economic terms? Think about it for a second. What is efficiency? If an activity is being done more efficiently, it means it's producing more output from same input, essentially reducing cost, or it's producing things faster, again, essentially reducing cost, or it's a combination of both and it should ultimately show up in cost. So ultimately all efficiency gain should show up in cost reduction. And so to estimate the impact of AI on total factor productivity, he says, let's find out what percentage of economic activity is impacted by AI and how much cost saving can AI bring to these impacted activities. Now this can be mathematically written as change in total factor productivity is equal to the percentage of economic activity that is impacted by AI multiplied by total cost saving that AI brings to these impacted activities. Confused? Well, don't worry, you are not alone. And let's go through each of these components step by step. So let's first break the total cost savings achieved by use of AI. So to estimate this value, we need to break it down into two of its subcomponents. One is share of labor in total cost and second labor cost saving by use of AI. So let's look at labor's share in total cost. We know that the cost of any productive activity comes from two components, cost of labor and cost of capital. Now in any economy, roughly 60% of total cost comes from labor and 40% from capital. Uh, think of a restaurant, about 40% of, it, of its cost comes from people like chefs, waiters, cleaners, and the rest 40% is rent, ingredients, and equipment. That's capital. And so broadly, 60% is labor's share in total cost. Now, next comes the cost saving AI might bring. So basically how much cheaper or faster things will get done when AI is used. So according to another research paper, 
on an average the labor cost saving achieved through ai is around 27% notice that this 27% reduction is not on total cost but only on the labor's share of total cost so let's simplify this a bit and try to understand this with a simple example suppose a particular task costs 100 to perform out of this 100 60 comes from labor and 40 comes from capital cost when ai is applied it mainly impacts labor portion of the cost and so ai reduces the labor cost component by 27% and thereby bringing it down to roughly 44 rupees from 60 this essentially means that the total cost of the same task now becomes 84 instead of rupees 100 in real world the labor to capital ratio is generally 60 to 40 however asimoglu adjusts this slightly to 57% and so the total cost saving achieved by use of ai in impacted activities can now be calculated as cost savings from ai multiplied by share of labor in total costs we know that the share of labor in total cost is 57% and cost savings from application of ai is 27% and therefore the cost saving achieved by use of ai in impacted activities comes out to be of 15% and so in our total factor productivity calculation we have figured out one of the component that is total cost saving achieved by use of ai in impacted activities Let's now shift our focus to the other component, uh, which is portion of economy AI can impact, and this one is tricky. What portion of total economic activity can actually use AI in a meaningful way? According to S. M. Oglu, only 4.6 percent. That sounds tiny, right? But here is how that number comes about. So he references a study. uh that looked at 19000 jobs across the us economy and they found that 20% of all the jobs are exposed to ai but here is the key exposed doesn't mean replaced just because ai can do something doesn't mean it's profitable to let it do it it's like saying that a robot can make coffee sure it can but is it cheaper faster and consistent enough to actually replace the barista maybe not yet and so when you adjust for what's actually profitable to automate or assist using ai the number falls sharply the study finds that only 23% of the of those 20% jobs can be realistically automated or augmented in the next 10 years and so the real world impact 20% multiplied by 23 roughly 4.6% of all economic activity and that's where the 4.6 number comes from so let's plug these numbers in and our productivity gain comes out to be 4.6 multiplied by 15 approximately 0.7% that means across the whole economy ai might increase productivity by just 0.7% over 10 years in gdp terms that's roughly 1.1% growth total or maybe a 1.6 to 1.8 if you use really optimistic estimates that's it that's the math and so what is asimoglu really saying here is he saying that ai is irrelevant well he's not saying ai doesn't matter what he is saying is that the macro impact the total boost to the economy might be smaller and slower than the hype suggests because deploying ai in real world isn't as easy as showing a cool demo it has to make economic sense but if we compare this with what other consulting firms like mckinsey or goldman they say ai could add 1.5 to 3.5% gdp growth every year that's almost 10 times asimoglu's estimate so who's right well here's the thing we don't have to pick a side we don't have to be an ai believer 
or an AI skeptic? I think the most reasonable way to look at this is that the truth probably lies somewhere in the middle. Even Asimoglu admits that making these estimates is hard. AI will absolutely touch our daily lives at work, in customer service, logistics, content, finance, everywhere. 20% of jobs being exposed to AI, that's huge. But the scale and speed of that change will depend on whether it makes real business sense. And so if you are an investor, don't chase every AI headline. Look for companies with real world use cases, the ones that are actually reducing costs or boosting productivity using AI, not just talking about it on earnings call. Because in this AI revolution, there will be winners and losers. On one side, workers might feel the disruption, but on the other side, the companies that truly harness AI could see massive gains. And those are the ones worth paying attention to. And that's the real story behind AI's hype versus its reality. If you guys found this breakdown useful, hit a like and share it with a friend who is into economics or tech. For my next video, I'm thinking maybe I'll dig a bit deeper into the research on the 19,000 jobs which Esimoglu uses and see which specific jobs and industries are most exposed and who stands to gain or lose the most from the shift. Let me know if this sounds interesting and don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss what's coming up next. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.